Hey, it's Jared, the people behind Immersed that built a amazing community and workspace for VR has created their own headset called Visor. And I wanted to talk about it because a while back I made a video talking about having worked in Immerse and I jump into Immerse quite often, but there are stumbling blocks to working in VR. Number one is having to wear a big VR headset like this. Now, this is the Quest Pro, a fantastic headset that is leaps and bounds better than other models that are heavier. So this is definitely lighter and feels great for short periods of time, but I have a hard time using a VR headset and being in a virtual workspace for long periods of time because it's a big device on your head and it's just not comfortable. But the benefits of having infinite or what feels like an infinite amount of screen space without having to have tons of monitors on my desk, being able to go and work from anywhere in my house or even going out and working somewhere else and being able to have the same productivity because of the screens and the displays. It's what keeps bringing me back to Immersed. On top of that, the community is awesome as well. There's fantastic people in there to get to know and work alongside of. I've made some good friendships in there. And so there's, there's just a lot that Immersed has going for it, but the limitations have been in the hardware. Now, I got to have a conversation with the CEO of Immerse today, and it's it was great just connecting and, and talking about the technology, but also talking about the experience of working in a virtual environment and being able to collaborate and interact with people in that type of way. And what led them to decide to get into hardware, which definitely is a big leap, especially considering there are big players in hardware out there. We have Meta, of course, with the Quest devices. We have Apple with their device coming in as well and many others that are out there that are doing a great job for what they're building. So where does Visor sit and what are some of the features of Visor? Well, first of all, Visor is going to be the lightest weight device that is available with the resolution and the features that it's going to have, of course, being a device that you would use with Immersed. So what that means is that it's not going to be a strain on your head anymore to have a device on your head all day long if you wanted to spend longer periods of time in the virtual environment. And you might say to yourself like, well, why would I want to be in a virtual work environment? Well, that's just a added benefit to what Immersed brings to the table. Immersed in its core is the ability to have multiple monitors and a more built out productivity system for yourself for getting work done. The added benefits are the community features, the visuals and all of that stuff that comes along with it. Visor is gonna make that much more accessible. Start Starting with how fast the thing powers up. It's going to power up extremely fast and get you into Immersed quicker. No more powering up your headset, grabbing your control, getting into the apps, opening the app, waiting for it to load, all of those things. I've found that it takes me three to five minutes to get into Immersed, and that's if everything goes smoothly when using my MetaQuest Pro, which isn't that bad. But if you're going to do that daily, it would be great if it was almost as fast as opening up the lid on your laptop. And Vice Visor is going to boot up just about as fast as you can get your laptop lid open. So Visor also is going to come in a couple of different versions. There's a 2.5K, a 4K, and a 4K Founders Edition that's available because pre-orders just recently opened up. And I've heard, and this is only a I think 48 hours after pre-orders are opening up, that they've sold over 25,000 Founders Editions, which is insane. One of those was me. 25,000 plus devices being the most popular option, which means they've sold some 4K and some 2.5K devices as well. And that just goes to show how amazing of a community that Immersed has built and a loyal fan base, I guess you could even say, that they would trust a company that hasn't done any hardware yet to build a hardware device that's gonna provide an excellent experience for its users. And so here's basically how this device is gonna work. How, how do you build a device that's gonna live on your face and have it be as lightweight as it's going to be? So I, I asked those questions, I wanted to know. It's gonna have an external battery pack, which even Apple's own device is not gonna have onboard battery. That's gonna help with the weight, not having to have a battery on your head. And so yes, there's gonna to have to be a cord that goes to a battery that is pocketable. We are looking to have a couple of different battery packs that will be uh, available to be real. I don't know if I even announced that, but not, here you go. Maybe it's a, it's a leak, but here you go. Uh, there's not gonna be a battery on board. It's yeah. gonna be uh, plugged into a battery that goes into your pocket, very similar to Apple Vision Pro. As soon as you plug in your, you can plug in your battery pack, the other end of it to your laptop. So it'll be headset cord, the battery pack. So maybe like a three or four foot cord that goes into your pocket. 
and the other end of that plugs into your laptop. So it'll be a battery pack that will have a uh, two hour battery configuration. And we're talking about a, a larger one too. They also have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth technologies are gonna be within that battery. The cool thing is as soon as you detach from your laptop, uh, it automatically switches to Wi-Fi, so your screens don't disconnect. Now that was really the only main concern that I initially kind of had is that, yeah, now the battery is proprietary and there's no way to power this thing other than with Immersed's batteries. And I'm not as concerned as I might've been about that in the past because battery technology is just is so good across the board these days that yeah, you're gonna need this proprietary battery pack in order to power your device and get its Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but that's taking the weight of all of that equipment off of my face and putting it somewhere else, which I do not mind. Now that battery pack can also then be connected to your computer, providing charging to the battery pack and a more robust connection to the headset itself. It'll just be slightly down -resed to a resolution that's still higher than what the Quest Pro even offers today. And this is where now I don't care that it's a proprietary battery pack anymore because I don't mind. I'm going to be on a laptop or some sort of a computer. I could plug the device in, which is great. And I'm getting the full 4K resolution if I purchase that model. And everything is just working fast and snappy through that wired connection, which means extremely low latency. Everything is going to be fast and snappy and not have to rely on questionable Wi-Fi network depending on where you're at. But if you need the freedom and flexibility to detach from your computer, then you can easily do that. You just unplug, put that battery in your pocket, and the transition from being plugged into wireless is gonna be seamless. I've had experiences in the past uh, using these devices where when I disconnected from a Wi-Fi or went from Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi direct, I would kind of get booted or get out of the software, and we're just not gonna run into those issues because all of this hardware is gonna be designed to work with the immersed software that's gonna be running on your computer. And so that experience is gonna be much easier and seamless and connecting to other devices should you need to connect to another computer is gonna be easy and seamless as well. And so I'm excited to get my hands on one of these devices and actually test it out. One of the benefits is being able to have external monitors within one unit. Right now they're advertising five plus screens and so I'm sure that's gonna change. Some of those specs are going to adjust as this product comes into fruition. 100 degrees of view is fantastic fantastic as well. That means you're going to have a nice wide angle of view, being able to see a lot that's going on without having to even move. And so as you eye track and move around and look without turning your head, you're going to be able to see a lot. And depending on the VR headset that you've used in the past, maybe with Immersed, you might have had to do a lot of head turning in order to see what was going on. So 100 degrees of view is great. They're calling that ultra widescreen. Then one of the questions that I had was as far as pass through goes. Now, pass through is kind of a mixed reality. It lets you see your displays on your screen, but also utilizing the cameras on the device to see what's going on around you. It helps you be able to stay in the real world in front of you while utilizing your displays, but it's not that great of an experience. The refresh rate on those cameras is pretty slow and the colors, nothing really matches. And it's actually, to me, more disorienting than it is to just not use it at all. Uh, with Visor, we are doing uh, stereoscopic uh, pass-through, so you'll have two cameras, it'll be higher resolution RGB than you see in any other device available on the market today. Apple Vision Pro obviously is gonna be matching us there, if not slightly higher than ours. Um, but it will have a depth sensor as well that allows us to make it so that occlusion is not an issue, that we have true depth. They're saying that the cameras that they're using are gonna provide a better experience than what we're used to if we're coming from like a MetaQuest or Quest Pro or those types of devices that are currently available. With what Apple is developing, the camera pass-through is going to be a better experience, but we're talking about a device that's $750 versus a device that's $3,500. From what I understand, their experience is going to be as close as they can get without having to hike the price up extremely high. And so I'm excited to test that out and see if I could finally live in that mixed reality world where I have my nice displays right attached to my face without having to be completely out of the environment that's in front of me. So obviously this device is not being designed to be a competitor with Quest Pro or any of these other VR type devices. There initially isn't gonna be an app store where you can install apps and do all of that stuff. This is not a device that's 
designed for that. This device initially is being designed to work with Immersed. What I'm hoping for is that there's ways to integrate software a little bit to make the experience a little bit better than just seeing the monitors in front of you. So for example, if you're on a Zoom call or something like that, interacting with people that are not in Immersed, would there be a better experience for interacting with people in a Zoom call within the visor than simply viewing them on one of the displays in front of you. And so who knows what will come over time with that. The AR VR landscape is changing extremely fast and more use cases are coming up all the time. Visor is gonna make it possible for Immersed to iterate and deploy features and experiences much faster than if they had to integrate with a lot of other devices. And so while the experience right now is starting out relatively the same as far as in-app experience, the hardware itself is gonna feel better. It's gonna be easier to use this, maybe even be easier to use it in public should you want to go and use it in an actual coffee shop or somewhere where you just don't want this on your head in public. Visor is gonna look a little bit less intrusive, which I think is a great start. And from there will come more ways of integrating this type of technology with in real life type of experiences, such as when you're writing on a whiteboard and wanting that experience to translate well across to people that you are working with in Immersed. And it's gonna be a, I wish I could say more, but it's gonna be an awesome, awesome experience. And um, I think the biggest takeaway here is, uh, honestly, the Apple Vision Pro like UI interactions. Uh, it's something that allows you and I to, again, it's optimized for work. So it won't be amazing for like hand tracked Beat Saber or something. It won't be amazing for like hand tracked I don't know, finger gun shooting, first person shooters, it would be optimized for work. We are getting to a place where these two types of worlds or these two types of experiences can live and work well together. I sure hope we're not heading to a world where we're all just wearing our visors and sitting in dark rooms alone, but in a world where we want to collaborate in a better way with people that are not in front of us while still being able to work and collaborate with those people that are in the same room as us, Visor is bringing that world much closer together so that we don't feel like we're disconnecting from the real life experiences that are in front of us just so that we can interact remotely with others. Those worlds are connecting finally with a device called Visor. So if you want to check out the pre-orders, the links are down below. So make sure to click on that link and check out the different options that are available, the pricing. They definitely have an FAQ page and more information about the device that's constantly being updated on their website. So make sure to hit that link that I've got down in the description. When I have my first opportunity, I will get my hands on one of these devices and film a video and share it with all of you my experience. I'm excited for Visor because this is a device that I feel like I could use daily that will improve my productivity and enhance my ability to collaborate with others. So make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. We'll see you in the next one.